Well, oh. hi there, boys and girls. <laughs> Sorry, Barry. <it's, laughs> we were just that's, going through the That's the one. You know, right Johnson, there. I hate to tell you, these onions you just put out here are coming on strong. I know, these pigs have turned the tail up because of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, howdy. Welcome to Cooking Cheap, and today we're doing all kinds of neat things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do an Italian dish, a fine Italian dish. I'll tell you about it in a minute. What are you doing? And I'm going to show people for all time about greens, cooking greens southern style. I thought you'd cook greens before. We did several weeks ago, and people came up and said, well, yeah, but so we're going to really get down scientifical about it today. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hmm. And well. uh, Mary Fields has written a letter to us. Says, hi, Larry and Labe. As usual, you did another super show. Tell PBS to give you a nighttime spot so we don't have to fight our spouses over their sports on Saturday. And she says, however, she does win when they fight. Well, I wish we could get PBS to give us the same time all over the world, but they haven't done it yet. That's but true. But maybe they will. That's true. Uh, is it Mary Fields? Uh -huh. Is she in relation to Strawberry Fields, I wonder? Oh, yeah. I, I used to know her. Mm -hmm. Cooking Cheap, guys, please send show number, blah, 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 SACE included. Now, always remember that, boys and girls, you want to get some of you. Now, we enjoy your show a great deal, but admit some of the recipes suck. You two oh. at least make up for it. Oh. Best regards, somebody, I can't, Mr. and Mrs. E. H. Bain of Lynchburg, Virginia. Please get a decent... What is that? Something or the other. Can opener. Can opener. Okay, well, we're working on that. And some of our recipes uh, are better than other of our recipes. Especially those cakes <laughs> that we had last week. The chocolate <laughs> one was good, but the other one wasn't so hot. Not so yes. good. Now, my mother and I thoroughly enjoyed your cooking cheap program. Your humor is the highlight of the show. We would like to see your programs continue in the future. And it's from Penny Gravely in Rocky Mount. Virginia. She in a relation to Penny Lane? Uh, no, I used no, to no, 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 no. We've already been through that. <sighs> well, Penny, thank you. And we'd like to see our shows continue, too. So please write in and tell your station that you would like to see this show continue. Shaves another customer. <laughs> Hi there. My husband and I really enjoy your pro program, or program, whichever. Gosh, I would like, I would hate to clean up after you, too. So would we. So would everybody else. <laughs> would you please send a copy of 811? Thanks, Mr. and Ms. Riz J. K. Bowman of Rocky Mount, Virginia. That's just down the road from us. If you're from this area, you know it's just down the road. Thank mm -hmm. you. What else? And oh, this is something that Babs oh, I don't gave think us. We get into well, that. I, I have a know. long recipe today. Well, let's get to and it. And I just don't have time for much nonsense. To be honest. All right, with. we'll hit it. <laughs> I'm going to right now. I am boiling water again. I believe that's where we started last week's show. <laughs> I seem to be perpetually boiling water. Oh, Did someone I am too. turn this down or is it no. stop boiling on its own? Well, I have, I'm going to do a wonderful recipe called pasta with mushrooms and prosciutto sent in by Elizabeth Hadley of Roanoke, Virginia. And the only thing I'm going to tell you is, and then I'll let you start get started on okay. yours. This is a long recipe. I have taken a, a, two tablespoons of margarine and a little bit of uh, olive oil, tablespoon of olive oil, and we've taken a single, I'm trying to get it, where, where is it? There it is. We're take, we've taken a single uh, clove of garlic and cut it in half, and I am now just kind of roasting that on an open fire. And then back here, I got some water boiling, <clears throat> and this calls for a specific kind of pasta. These little things, these little things, if they had a whistle on, they'd whistle. See, like that. <laughs> Sound effect man uh -huh. is a little off. But anyway, this is called uh, Mustacliochi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he believes me. You could use Pini Ziti or Mustaccioli pasta. So I'm not very good at this. Now, I'm sorry, you're all making fun of me. And well, I don't, Penny, the I'm, only thing I know about it is Penny is, the, is one that looks like a feather. <laughs> well, that's what it means. Anyway, this stuff is, is sort of round and it's hollow like, it's inside. It's like macaroni, except it's funny. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out, we're going to boil it until it's al dente, which means chewy to the taste or chewy to the bite. Just a little tiny chewy, all right? You don't want it to get like, you remember how your mom used to boil macaroni until it got real big and rubbery? Well, you don't want to do that. Al dente 
is when it's just a little bite to it. Right. So that's what when we're going to do. it's not pasty. And it's not pasty. That's right. Somewhere in between all that. Okay, Laban. Well, you know, several weeks ago we did a recipe with greens and corn, and we talked about cooking greens, and some people uh, I have subsequently talked to said, I wish you'd spend a little more time on the greens and tell us because it is a southern dish and everybody likes it and they're good for you. Well, yes, it is southern and that, yes, they are good for you, so I thought we would. Today. A lot of people have said that they wish we'd spend a lot less time on the corn on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought a lot of different greens from the market and I want to show them to you and tell you the difference. All of these greens are part of the coal family, you know, Herman Cole, Ralph Cole, Susie Cole. Susie Cole. Yeah. No, they're coals. That's the same family that includes cabbage and broccoli and uh, cauliflower and things like and that. And slaw. Right, slaw. And <laughs> <laughs> so they're all, they all will grow most all year long and uh, real cold weather and even a frost does not really affect them. They will handle through real cold weather. and easy to grow. Well, so let me show you what we got over here. We're starting right here. <clears throat> These are mustard greens. <clears throat> you know, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, oh, for heaven's sake. you'd believe Jimmy Swagger. <clears throat> and they're right here. And uh, they're, real, <clears throat> they're real tasty. This is kale. And a lot of people now all over the country are beginning to eat kale, and it's generally available well, is it everywhere. Is something in the water? Is something no, going around? No, it's just that it's, for oh. the first time, greens are available beyond just spinach oh, and cabbage. Okay. I was just this wondering. is, uh, we, we've seen this before on the show, this is collard greens, and this is, a, this is what it looks like out in the garden. It's a great big leafy plant like this. And I might hold, this is, a, this is what kale, ooh, almost lost it. This is what kale looks like when it grows. It's also a large leafy plant like this. Then these are turnip greens, and all they are really are just the tops off of the turnips, and they are delicious to eat. However, they are very strong, so you want to be careful if you, you don't want to get too strong uh, greens like collards and turnip greens mixed together sometimes because that might be a little bit strong, as we say in the South. And the last one is this. This is dry land cress. Uh, this is similar to watercress because it looks like watercress, but it does grow on the dry land and not down in the water. And this has gone over a little bit. Uh, you have to look, the, some parts of it have gotten already yellow. And we don't have the rape. Somebody said, where is the rape? Rape is another kind of green that is available. Also, here in the South, we eat dandelion greens, and, but they're the young dandelion sprouts that come up in the early spring and they make also a delicious salad or cooked greens. So these are the different kind of greens that we have. They all share the characteristic of needing to be washed thoroughly. You really need to work them over under a faucet of water because uh, they do have a tendency, as you can see on these mustard greens right here, here's one, because they fall over, they got a lot of dirt on them. So uh, you want to make sure you got all of that off. Now, I'm going to start picking these greens to pick out enough to, to cook here on the show today. And I'm going to be cooking them down in this stock that I cooked yesterday at home with a ham hock. And uh, there's a little piece of the uh, hock floating around in it. The rest, the other hock is over here. And I'm going mm, to, uh, boy, that looks good. to uh, pull this apart and take the meat that's out of it and put them down in the greens in a little bit. So, uh, Blair, I'm going to pick a little greens here while you're doing that. Okay, here's where we are. We got our pasta boiling away here. It's going to have to go for a little bit. And over here, we are now going to remove from our margarine and uh, from our little bit of olive oil. We have been sort of frying these. Get out of there, you little rat. I won't come out. There we go. Those are your little, two little halves of garlic. We're going to remove that at this time. And in there, on a hot heat, we're going to add to that an onion chopped up real nice. And we're going to take a quarter pound of prosciutto chopped. And let me show you that. I'll show you over here. This is what it looks like. I got it chopped wafer thin yesterday. This is an Italian ham. Isn't that when you say what right. that is? You're right. Italian ham? It's and like it, a Smithfield ham, <coughs> Italian style. Now this is not, the Roanoke, Virginia is not the Italian cooking hub of the world, in case you people out there haven't figured that out. 
So when old Uncle Lair went out yesterday to buy this prosciutto, there were a lot of people scratching assorted parts of their body saying, well, I just don't remember I've heard that before. So I ended up going to two or three stores and not being able to find it. In some parts of the country, it would be very common, very easy to find. And if you know where to go here, it's not that difficult to find. I later discovered that I could go to a, uh, a gourmet shop and find it. And then there are also a lot of grocery stores uh, that you can find it in. You just have to shop around a little bit. Now we're going to put that in there, and also we're going to take about, oh shucks, about a pound of mushrooms chopped. We're going to put those in there, and we're going to saute that for about five minutes. So what I'm going to do right now is going to start chopping up some mushrooms and throwing in there. I'm just going to chop them real fast so that we just don't have to spend all day playing around with it because I haven't got a lot of time. I'm just going to take some mushrooms in there and put them in there. And that's all I'm going to do for right now. Okay. Laban? All right. Well, Larry, I want to show people after you pick out what you're going to have, just what to do with the kale. Now, you could cook the whole thing just like this. I prefer to pull the leaf part off of it and not cook the stems because those stems have a tendency to be real tough. And it's much easier just to cook the leafy part and which will cook a lot faster. Now, there are two schools of thought about cooking the uh, greens, about how long you should cook them. They'll cook real fast, as we're going to see here on the show, but you could also cook them all day long if you wanted to. Uh, that's a way our grandparents did. They'd put a pot of greens on the stove in the morning, cook them all day. Now, what we want to do, we, our stock is really getting up there, and we're going to season our stock. My grandmother wouldn't approve of this, but this is the way I like to cook greens. She now. was right severe, though. She never uh -huh. approved much of anything. As I now, recall. I've got about two teaspoons of oregano. She didn't approve of you. Well, she, she liked me. She I did. Like she it. liked me a lot. We got along real well. Now, I'm going to put in a little bit of granulated garlic. Oh, no. Yeah. I had the real thing over here if you wanted it. Well, that's all right. This is a little faster. We're going to now put in... Uh, a hefty portion of basil. I'm tired of those. I'm going to throw the rest of them away. There's a lot of, lot of spice, seasoning in this and several good helping shakes of red pepper flakes. Let me stir this around now a little bit. Now that's going to boil here in just a second and we want to now we're going to uh, cut the fat off of this ham hock and we're going to put that down into the water too. And there's only a little meat on here, but it's real tasty and you don't want to leave it out. Now when I was a child, they used to do this and put great big slices of fat back down in the greens and you'd get a big hefty piece of fat back with your greens when you ate them. I personally think that's why I have a bad heart today from eating all that fat back as a kid. You know, I'm just tearing this. This is a country ham hock. You can use any kind of a... Ooh, this is smelling good. Now let me get over here and Larry, you take it away while I wash these greens here a little bit. Okay, the next thing I got to do now, we've sauteed this stuff. You look down in there, it's real pretty. All the mushrooms and onions and prosciutto, prosciutto uh, ham. And now we're going to add a half a cup of white wine. Actually, that's a blush. I hope you'll... Pardon me. <laughs> I couldn't find... I just got whatever I felt like getting. And uh, what else? And uh, pepper flakes and a little salt. Uh, pepper flakes. How many pepper flakes? Well, oh, quite a few. Quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Boom. Kind of add a little, a little something extra to it. And meanwhile, my noodles, my pasta, is at this very point al dente, and I okay. need something to All sort right, of... All right, well, I'll give you this. All right. Just let me feed. Now, this is called feeding the greens. What, are they you hungry? Just, you just put the greens a little bit at the time. Don't dump them all in at once. They will kind of melt down as you put them in. So don't worry. And we're going to have mixed greens tonight, Dr. Bly. Oh. All right, here you go. All right. Oops. You can have Excuse that. Me. Yeah, this stuff is al dente. I'm going to go back and I'm going to drain these in preparation for serving them 
or actually adding them to the mess that I'm preparing in the other pot right now. So I'll let those drain a little bit. Meanwhile, you have to sort of, you're supposed to boil down your wine a little bit until it's, it sort of boils down. So that's what we're doing right now. I can't hurry it again at this stage. I'm just going to keep it real hot and we're going to sort of render that down just a tiny little bit. You can't see it, but it's going on in there, take my word. And then in a couple of minutes, we're going to uh, put some cheese and parsley and all of that stuff in a bowl. We're going to drain the pasta, add cream and peas to it. And uh, stir in the other mixture and it should be real good, I promise you. And right now, I'm just pulling this ham hock apart and getting the fat off of it and just kind of doing it like this so that you get the, the meaty part of the hock down in there. I did not put any salt in this dish because your cured ham has got enough salt in it and you don't need to add any more. I might add, now let me tell you, when I fix this at home, I uh, don't, uh, if I'm fixing it for myself, I do not use the ham hock. I leave that completely out of the meal and I just use the water, hot water, with the spices in it to cook my greens in. And that's a lot more healthful if you are like me and you've had some difficulties with your coronary side. And uh, you'll find that the greens taste just fine that way. Now if somebody comes, now like this, the reason I cooked this hock yesterday was that, that uh, I could let it stand overnight and get the fat off of it before I got it on the show today, which is what I have done. Larry, how you doing? Okay, well, here is, I'm going to decide to serve it up on this. I think it'll be real pretty, that platter. <laughs> I got a nice big platter of it right here. And it'll look good. Those are the platters you've heard of, and they used yes. to sing a lot uh -huh. of songs. And this is the only one that's left. And he, anyway, uh, real dumb, but let's go on with the show here. Uh, what I got to do at this point is I have to, I have to add to this a cup of frozen peas thawed. And they've been thawing, oh, they've been thawing for Since yesterday. a day or two. <laughs> this is what they've been. And uh, what's the more lovely Maureen doing out here? Isn't that pretty? Ooh, that's lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, they're just going everywhere. People be slipping on these in the halls of Blue Ridge Public Television for a month. They just real pretty. I'm going to add those. Drain pasta, add cream and peas. I have to add a half a cup of heavy cream. And one of these little containers is about a half a cup of heavy cream. All right? Just add to it. Yes. I, it's, it's, I think you add it to that. You do? Mm -hmm. Cook pasta, boil, and combine cheese and parsley. Small. Drain pasta, add cream and peas. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You're right. You toss it. But you're not going to be able to do that. But I'm not going to be able to do that, that so I'm just going to take the cream and I'm just going to pour it over it. Because I can't toss it, but you really, it, that's true. You should have it in something large enough you can toss it in. <laughs> so I know where I'd like to toss it right now. But anyway, there we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A little bit, we're going to add all the stuff that we have on top of the stove to it. Meanwhile, in another little thing, we're going to take some some Parmesan cheese, about uh, oh, about a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, put it in a little bowl, and to that we're going to add some chopped parsley. And I want you to see this, John. Isn't that beautiful? Uh -huh. This is the first parsley of spring. Out of your garden. Literally outside of my house. So I'm going to chop that up. I'm going to put that. Now that's going to be served as a side dish, all right? You just pass that around. You know, people out there are not going to appreciate how early that is because they don't know when the show. Well, that's be right. Cut. I mean, we're talking the, almost the dead of winter here, mm -hmm. and it's already peeping. And it wasn't much. I mean, it was just a tiny little bit peeping its head out. And I went out and just kind of sneaked some of it out of there. And you got to take that and you got to mix some of that in with the cheese. Just a little cheese parsley mixture. That's going to be kind of a side dish. Okay, that's what that's going to be. And I guess that all we have to do when this boils down a little bit is we just have to take this and put it over on that right. and serve it. Mm -hmm. And you could toss it or whatever. It's going to be real pretty. I'm still boiling down the, uh, the wine, but it's almost ready. So anyway, maybe we ought to look at the recipes if you're ready, are you? Yep, I sure am. Let's do. Oh, mine first. Pasta with mushrooms and prosciutto. Sent in by Elizabeth Hadley of uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Clove of garlic, half teaspoon of butter and olive oil. And you fix all that in advance. A pound of mushrooms chopped, added in there, and the uh, prosciutto uh, chopped and put in there. 
large onion chopped also in there, a little salt, red pepper flakes, half a cup of dry white wine, which we are now boiling down, and 12 ounces of uh, any kind of pasta of those three are ideal. And I took the last one, which is <laughs> four cups of boiling water, and of course that's just to boil the pasta in. Okay. And for the greens. Oh, I'm sorry. And of course, don't forget uh, screen three, a half cup of grated Parmesan cheese, a little char chopped parsley, or charged parsley, and a cup of frozen peas thawed a little heavy cream, which we put over top of that, which is real pretty, real nice. Now. What? <laughs> He got I don't it. see it. Oh, that's <laughs> mine. Two pounds of green and uh, of your choice. Uh, a ham hock, some uh, dill weed, some basil, some oregano, uh, some garlic powder or fresh garlic, salt and pepper, and a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And that's what you need. Now, Larry, I don't know whether these greens are going to be really cooked enough. Do you have some real ones? No. Oh, no. Look so, at this. But let me dish them out into the bowl. Pretty? I'm telling you. This needed to go just a little bit longer, but it'll be all right. I mean, there's nothing raw in it. It's just I would have liked to have cooked it down a little more. Had I had a little more time. If I'd have known you all were coming into my kitchen, I would have started earlier. Anyway, there it is. That's enough for Laban, and I have another one for myself. And <laughs> Actually, we're going to take this over there. Oh, i got to get something to serve it with. I'll be right back momentarily. Suit yourself. I'm going to get a spoon. Thank you. <sighs> well, I hope I don't trip and fall and throw this all over the floor. Whew. Oh, but they do smell good. I, I think even if they're a little tough, they'll be good. It's tough, but it's good. Here, let me give you some of this. This should have really been tossed. And if we had just had a little more time and a little more everything else around here, we'd have, we'd have had time to do it. it. Smells good, though, doesn't mm -hmm. it? should be quite delightful. Now, you know, that. we always have with our greens a little side dish of chopped onions. Here, let me put some Parmesan in. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, <coughs> we generally serve greens with vinegar. Oh, me too. I love it. Just a little bit, though. Don't do too much. It'll turn your nostrils inside out. And that's yeah, always right some. rude when that happens. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, I thought for sure we would have had some. It smells real good. Spiritus fermenti to go with this. Well, we, we did, and I, I drank it all during the show. Oh. No, I didn't. It's over there. I just didn't think. How are the greens? Mm, I don't like them. They would have been even more fantastic, of course, after a while, but we couldn't help that. They are mm. real good, nevertheless. Mmm. Wow. But how is this stuff? It's good. <coughs> real nice. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That mm. is a good combination of flavors. What is this, Donald Duck? Is that it? Mm-hmm. Well, bye, everybody. Come back again. Mmm.